Good morning guys. It has been a long time since I've been out in the woods. I probably haven't foraged since the spring and uh, it's a good time to be out in the woods. A lot of the greenery is starting to die back so it's not as big of a jungle back here as it is in the middle of the summer. Also, finally, it has cooled down enough where I don't think that ticks are gonna be a huge issue today. Definitely not mosquitoes, hopefully not chiggers, but we'll see how that goes. There are a couple things I'm out here looking for specifically today. Uh, the first one are rose hips. We've got lots of wild roses in this part of the country. A lot of them are considered invasive, but I really enjoy them. Rose hips can be collected and dried, used in your teas. You can make rose hip jelly, but I collect them for tea because they are super high in vitamin C and they're also an antioxidant. So today I'm looking for rose hips. We'll see if there are any persimmons left on the trees. They are a favorite of the wildlife, the deer, the raccoons, other things like that. So we'll see if there are any persimmons. And I am also always looking out for mushrooms. Now I don't really collect many of them and I don't eat hardly any of them because I'm a little afraid of eating something that is poisonous and I don't know it, but I really am captivated by mushrooms. So we're gonna look around today. Maybe there are some things that'll surprise me. Anyway, you guys, I really just hope that you enjoy spending some peaceful time with me out in the woods, walking around, seeing some beautiful things, and maybe collecting some treasures. Speaking of treasures, I always bring a cute basket. Let's go see what we can find. Here are some other mushrooms. Well, here is a teeny tiny bright red mushroom. Just tiny. We're walking down toward where Kevin hunts and he said that the other day he saw a bunch of mushrooms right on the trail. He tried hard not to step on any so we'll see if we can find them. You might hear him in the background. He is working on cutting up that giant tree that fell in our driveway last week. He is busy working on that, turning that into firewood.
down this path right here are several persimmon trees. I don't know if they're in fruit or if I've completely passed it, but let's go down this way and take a look, see if we can gather some. And along the way, because this is such a nice path, we might see some nice mushrooms. Here's one. Looks like someone thought it was tasty. Well, here's a mushroom. Well, a couple of them. This one, you know, it looks kind of purple. I've, somebody thought that was tasty right there. Here's another one coming up over here. Not sure what that is. Wow, I think I see a big one just like that. Yep, wow. Look at that. That is really a big size mushroom. I'm gonna pop the top off of that. It's kind of lavender colored. That is beautiful. It looks like those are all over the place in here. I can see several of them coming up. I see the persimmon trees behind me. Here's one persimmon tree. I think their bark is so interesting. Because they're in the middle of all these other trees, they grow really tall and spindly. They still do produce a little bit of fruit. There are a few more in this cluster over here. Well, there are definitely persimmons over here. I can actually smell them on the ground. They're very fragrant, and once they've been on the ground for a while, they start to ferment, and then you can smell them even more. Let's take a look around and see if we can collect some. Persimmons are orange. They're an orange fruit. And they're circular. Here's one. This is what they look like. And their flesh inside is very sweet. And it's it's kind of citrusy slash apricot -y flavored. I don't know, it's hard to describe what a persimmon tastes like. But because our trees are so tall, there's no way for me to just pick them from the branches. We need to look on the ground and pick up the ones that look like they've freshly fallen and that don't really smell like maybe they've started fermenting. I can see that there have been lots of animals around here uh, there are lots of persimmon seeds around and lots of persimmon skins like the animals have been enjoying the persimmon. So let's see how many we can find that look like they've freshly fallen and grab some for the basket. Well, here are persimmon seeds. Looks like somebody ate one of the persimmons and spit it out onto the ground. And you can see that there are persimmons kind of everywhere in different stages. That looks like it could be okay. That looks okay. Here's another one. Oh, it was still connected to a little branch. Another one, also connected to a little branch. I bet this branch fell in the storm. Oh, there goes some geese.
Well, this is something you don't see every day. It looks like a whole persimmon branch has fallen down with a bunch of persimmons still on it. Right here. Well, that is a fabulous find. There's something you should know about persimmons. If they're not ripe, they're terrible. Don't even try them. They're so bitter, and it's the skins. They're so bitter when you bite into them that it takes all of the moisture out of your mouth. I can't even explain it any better than that. Persimmons that are ripe are fabulous, but if they're not quite ripe, they're terrible. Now, there is some local controversy around here about when persimmons are ripe. Some people insist that they will not be ripe until after a, the first hard frost. Other people argue with that and say they've had ripe persimmons as early as August. To me, I don't even get out in the woods until way after the harvest of the garden is completely done, so I am lucky that this time of year when I come out to look, they've been here and have been ripe. Let's go see if we can find more. Well, I didn't get a ton of persimmons. It looks like only about 13 of them, but we'll have fun trying to make something out of these. Now, behind me is my favorite place to forage for rose hips, mainly because they are so easy to access. Like I said before, we have wild rose growing all over the place, and really I've seen some places already where I could go in and harvest some of the rose hips, but it's so densely grown up by the rose bushes and they're just filled with tiny thorns all over the place. I decided not to venture into there until I've exhausted my favorite place to forage for the rose hips. So let me bring you closer so I can show you all about them. Down at the bottom of that tree is a branch that starts of the roses and they come all the way up here and then branch off into a bunch of little branches, all kind of like a bramble up here. And they are just loaded with rose hips. Now let me grab some to show you without poking everything. Now you can see those red things are rose hips. But I'm super disappointed actually right now. These rose hips are not quite ready. You can see that they're, they're kind of an orange color. And in order for them to be super sweet and just filled with lots of vitamin C and antioxidants, they need to be almost blood red. I'll try one and see if they're anything close to being ready. No, they don't have any flavor at all. So I'll have to just be patient and come back here another time. Let me try this one. Well, that one's better. Mmm. Oh yeah, that one's much better. They're super sweet tasting. Almost kind of like a candy. And when they're ripe enough, and that they're not dried from being on there for too long, you can actually squish them in your fingers. 
and see that there's like red pulpy stuff in there. And it tastes good. So there might be a few that I can find to take back with me. Well, I got about a tablespoon full. Not a lot, but there's more for later. Let's go see what else we can find. puffball mushroom. Definitely a puffball mushroom. Those are edible. These are one of the very few that I'll take back to the house. I think this particular one is called a gem studded puffball. Love these guys! some bright white mushrooms. Those are so pretty. Very dense. Oh, oh boy. You guys know what that is? That's a bad one. That is the bad one. That one's called like Angel of Death. Something like that. Something about dying. That is a bad one. Guess we're not picking that. This is exactly why I don't pick mushrooms except for the ones I know for sure like puffballs. That could be bad news bears. And it's such a beautiful day here. I think the colors are like at their best right now in the Ozarks. I wasn't sure we were gonna have fall color at all. It was so hot and then all of a sudden it went cold. I thought that the leaves were just gonna turn brown and fall off all the trees. But I wanna take you kind of over by a ledge area and just pan through the woods to show you just the beautiful colors that we can see uh, from deep within our property. Well, just before I started panning to show you this beautiful, beautiful view behind me, I heard the school bus, so I know the girls are home. And I had one last surprise that I found. I almost stepped on it. Let me show you. On this stick are these like gelatinous type mushrooms. They grow on sticks and branches and things like that, and after it rains, they swell up and get all jelly-like, you can see on there. But then when the rain goes, they dehydrate back onto the sticks. It's kind of neat. You can collect these, the edible ones. I know these are edible. I'm not sure about the ones in your area. Thought I heard a critter. Uh, but you can collect these and let these dehydrate and then rehydrate them in soups and things like that. I'm going to take this branch up to the house and show the kids and I might hold on to these for a soup we have coming up. So you guys, thanks so much for joining me today as I took a peaceful walk in the woods and discovered some 
pretty awesome and amazing things we have here on our place. I really enjoy spending time out in nature. It's been a long time and I'm so glad that I was able to take some time out today. Thanks for coming with me and I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Until next time, you guys, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.